Hey there guys, Aaron Bring with Brings Bees here today. Today we're going to be building a cheap beehive. This is a starter beehive for those of you who are wanting to get into beekeeping. We've done a video that was similar to this last year. It was a $20 beehive. Um, this is going to be very similar to that. Um, this is about a $40 uh, uh, beehive. So what we're going to be building today is a new design for a bottom board, a single deep, two mediums, and a lid and we have some extra wood left over to be able to build a hive stand. So that's all under 50 bucks, and this is all wood that I found at Home Depot in the uh, reduced lumber pile. So uh, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. We would really appreciate that. We'll be doing more videos like this, uh, covering small-scale commercial beekeeping and upscaling uh, your beekeeping to a, a, from a hobby level to maybe a sideliner level. So hopefully I can help you guys with that. So, as always, Aaron Brink with Brink's Bees. Thanks for your time, guys. All right, guys. So, the first thing that you want to go grab is a 2x6x8 by by foot. Uh, this is uh, Douglas fir, $6.02. The biggest thing that you want to look for, this is my board here that I'm getting, is you want a board that's nice and straight, look down the end, and has very few knots. So that's the first thing you're gonna need. Two by six by eight, it's very clean. All right guys, so here's what we're looking at. We've got the reduced lumber, 70% off. And I found two, I'll be right there, man. Yeah. Found two uh, one by eights. We're gonna grab those. And then there's some one by sixes in there. And we're gonna grab a couple of those and I'll tell you exactly what I get. All right, guys. So here's some of the stuff that I got for this super cheap beehive. What we've got is I found two for sure uh, one by eights. And then these are one by sixes, three just random one by sixes. Now, the nice thing about these is these are the 70% off at Home Depot. And this is what you wanna get. Get the cheap stuff, you don't need the super expensive stuff, all right? All right guys, we're back at the house here. I'm gonna start cutting lumber here. Um, I'm actually gonna start off with one of the uh, supers. This is a one by eight, and we're gonna cut, cut it down to lengths real quick. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna true up the board. So what we're looking at is notice that we've got some damage here, and the cut's a little bit off. So we're gonna have to true that up. And then what you want to do is kind of go through your wood and look at it and you want to look at where your knots are You don't want any knots Where that's going to be on the top or the bottom of each box like this one if you can Measure and cut that out that will help you a lot like don't even include this in a box uh, This one down here is nice. That's or not nice But it's fine because it's a tight knot and you know like this one over here not that big of a deal so we actually need a uh, 14 and three quarters inch board. So we're actually gonna cut a little bit off here and a little bit off here and we're gonna get a 14 and three quarters inch board real quick. And that's gonna be one of our end pieces to our super, okay? All right guys, so I went ahead and made a cut and this is our cut edge, our fresh cut edge. So we know that that's our straight edge and we're gonna measure 14 and three quarter inches from this edge over and make another cut and that's going to be our end piece uh, to one of our medium supers okay all right guys so we've already cut one piece at 14 and three quarters remember with each and every single piece you cut you want a true edge so cut your edge and then measure your board out make sure you don't have any knots up in the top or the bottom of the board if you can really help it so you want to to make this hive today we're making a single deep with two medium supers. So you're gonna end up wanting to cut four total boards at 14 and three quarters inches. Okay, and remember, always cut a true edge, measure from that true edge, and then come over and cut, okay? All right, guys, so we've cut the uh, end pieces for our medium super. Now we're gonna cut the side pieces for our medium supers. Um, for this project, you're gonna need at least two one by eight by eight foots and uh, like I said I got these these were the 70% off cheap lumber at Home Depot so I got two of them I've went ahead and cut my uh, four pieces at 14 and three quarters 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna start at 21 inches and make a cut and that'll give me a true edge on this side and also on this side. And then I'll go back to this board and cut it down to 20 inches total. And then I'll just make three more cuts at 20 inches total. So your side pieces are gonna be 20 inches long and make sure you cut true edges on those with each cut, okay? All right, guys, so now we have all the pieces to our supers. We have four pieces that are cut at 14 and 3 quarter inches, and we have four pieces that are cut at 20 inches. That's everything you need for your supers. And that's a one by eight, by the way. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and cut our deep super. We have a one by 12 by six foot here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure 15 inches over and make a cut at 15 inches, okay? And that's gonna give us a true cut. And then we'll flip our board, measure from our true cut to 14 and three quarter inches and cut it to 14 and three quarters inches. You're gonna need two boards of one by 12 that are cut at 14 and three quarter inches, okay? All right, guys, we made our first cut on our one by 12 by six foot. And as you can see, this is where I cut. So this is our true cut. So we're actually going to flip this board over. Remember, we cut it at 15 inches. And the reason we did that is so we had just a little bit of extra room over here to make a cut, okay? So we're going to measure from our true cut, 14 and 3 quarters inches over, and make a cut there. And then we're going to come to our board here on the true cut side, measure from the true cut, 14 and 3 quarter inches down, and you're going to need two boards of the one by 12 at 14 and three quarter inches. And those are your end pieces of the uh, box, okay? We've cut our two boards at 14 and three quarters on our one by 12. And now we're gonna cut two boards at 20 inches on our one by 12. Always make sure to measure from your true cut end. All right, guys, now we've cut all the pieces to our boxes. We're gonna rip them down to the correct height. So we have four pieces that are one by 12. Two of them should be 14 and three quarter inches long, and two of them should be 20 inches long. And we're gonna rip the height down from 12 inches to nine and five eighths. These are your deep boxes. So you're gonna have four boards that are nine and five eighths tall, okay? And then you'll have eight boards that are six and five eighths tall for your supers. So we're first gonna rip down our uh, deep supers, uh, our deep supers. So this is gonna be nine and five eighths. So edge of the board against the guard. We wanna make sure that your, your guard is set at nine and five eighths. And I always, I always go just a little bit over that five eighths to add in the, uh, the width of the saw blade. So you always wanna use a push stick. So we're gonna rip all four boards to nine and five eighths. Okay, guys? So we've ripped down our one by 12 boards. And as you can see, as we push the board through at the nine and five eighths, it's gonna cut off this nice little piece right here. Now, these pieces are actually gonna become your handles for each box. So you always wanna hang on to the long sides, the 20 inch sides that you cut down. Those will become your handles, okay? We're now gonna cut down all of your medium super boxes. So remember these were one by eights. So really it's seven and a half, um, the nominal measurement. So we're gonna cut down all eight boards for your mediums and you're gonna cut these to six and five eighths, okay? And like I said, on your gate, you wanna set it at six and five eighths. I always go just one notch over from the five eight to account for the blade width, okay? So we're gonna push the board through as such, making sure that you keep the board up against the gate, press into the saw blade, and please make sure that you use some type of push stick as such when you're doing that, okay? Make sure you don't cut yourself. So we're gonna cut all these down to six and five eighths in height, okay?
All right, we've now cut down our deep bodies and our medium bodies. So we have nine and five eighths in height and six and five eighths in height. Now we're gonna cut our uh, frame rests and I'm gonna set the camera up so you can see how we cut the frame rests for these. You're only cutting the short boards, the uh, 14 and three quarter inch boards. There should be six total. All right guys, so we're gonna set up our frame rest cut right now. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna raise or lower your, your saw blade, okay? And what we want that saw blade height to be at is you're gonna find the highest point on the saw. So you kind of rotate the saw until you get a tip at the top. And then you're gonna lower this down until you get to 3 eighths of an inch. So right there's a half and three eighths, okay? And that's gonna be your first cut. And what you wanna do is you wanna move your cut gate over to five eighths. So we're gonna shift this over and we're gonna set our cut gate down to five eighths. And that's how far it's gonna cut be down. So remember, three eighths of an inch high with your blade, and then just five eighths inch of depth. And that's gonna be the first cut we're gonna make, guys. All right, guys, so now we're gonna start our cuts on our frame rests. We already went over the measure. Remember we want our blade height at three eighths of an inch high, and our gate to be five eighths of an inch deep. So, we're going to run this board through here real quick. Push it through. And this is what your board should look like once you make the first cut for your frame rest. See how I can turn it? And see, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a cut down to that, and that's going to create your frame rest. All right, we're now gonna make our second cut from our frame rest. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move our gate over to three eighths. And actually I go one, just a hair over a 16th of an inch more than three eighths. So instead of three eighths, I go slightly below um, just a 16th and that takes up the blade width, okay? And the way you're gonna do this also is you're gonna raise your blade up, okay? To five eighths inch deep. Okay, so you're raising your blade up to 5 eighths inch deep and you're moving your gate to 3 eighths. And then what you'll do is you'll turn your saw on and you're gonna run the board through like this. And you always wanna make sure that that cut edge, that first cut of your frame rest is on the outside because when you cut, the saw blade is gonna cut up into that frame rest. See how the saw blade is going to cut and it's going to cut this little sliver of wood off and that's going to actually make your frame rest right here. So we're going to make sure we raised it the right height, turn on the saw and bring it through and we should have a frame rest afterwards. All right guys, so here's your uh, your frame rest. And those, you're going to do this on all of your end pieces. So we did our deep box, and now we're going to do all of our uh, medium box, and then I'll show you how to assemble your boxes real quick and easy. All right, guys, so we uh, have cut all our boards for our boxes. I'm going to show you how to assemble the boxes now. So we're going to assemble the deep box, and then I'll show you frames fitting into it, okay? So you've got your two end pieces and your two side pieces. good way to do this is uh, you're going to need some wood glue and uh, Brad Neller. <clears throat> it's a good way to start. What I like to do is you just put your, uh, I use my table saw to do this, put your uh, long piece or your side piece up against, then you're going to slide over your end piece and that's how you're going to assemble. We're going to put a little wood glue here. So a little wood glue on the end. And I'm going to come over, placing that against, making sure everything's nice and tight and ready to go. And we're going to put one staple in to start, and then we're going to make sure the bottom's lined up. We'll put a staple in the middle. We'll kind of pull it out, 
and we'll put a staple in the bottom, squeezing together nice and tight. So there's one end piece, and we'll do it the same with the other end piece. So a little bit of wood glue. Place that against, slide everything together, make sure it's where it should be. Take our stapler, I'll start down at the bottom because it's already lined up pretty good. There goes one, there goes two, and then I'm going to really press in on this top one. Make sure it's nice and tight where it needs to be. All right. There's a little bit of gap right there, but we'll fix that with a screw here in a minute. We'll turn it around, do our last long piece. And what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of wood glue first. Some wood glue. Wood glue. Set that on top. Try to get it to where it should be. Oh, and you can use clamps and all kinds of stuff for this, but I think that's a little excessive. It's just a beehive. It doesn't have to be perfect. The bees aren't going to care if it's perfect. Get it nice and tight. like my gun doesn't want to work. There we go. Flip it around. And make sure it's lined up. Nice and good. Sometimes got to play with it a little bit. Get it nice and squared up. All right, we're now gonna cut our bottom board. So this is one of our one by sixes that we purchased. And we're gonna cut three links, three at 22 inches long. Three at 22 inches long, and that's gonna be our bottom board. And then we're gonna have to rip one of those down, okay? So make three cuts at 22 inches long on your one by six. All right, so we've cut our three pieces for our bottom board, three pieces of our one by six at 22 inches long, and we're gonna take one of them and cut a fourth of an inch off of it. So instead of being five and a half inches wide, it's gonna be five and a quarter inches wide, and then that will equal our bottom board. All right, so we're gonna cut one of these boards down to five and a quarter. All right, guys, we're now gonna cut uh, some additional pieces for our bottom board. You're gonna need your two by six, and you're gonna measure 16 and a quarter inches over, 16 and one fourth inch over, and you're gonna make a cut. All right, guys, we're now going to take the two by six that we cut to 16 and a fourth inches long, and we're gonna cut it or rip it down the middle using our table saw. You're gonna set your fence, your gate, at two inches, two and three quarters inches. So you're gonna cut your two by six directly in half by setting your gate at two and three quarters inches. So we're just gonna push it in as such. Make sure you use a push stick and cut it in half, okay? All right, guys, now we're gonna cut our dados into the two pieces that we just cut. So you're gonna set your gate 
your cut gate to three quarters of an inch, okay? Three quarters of an inch. So, as you can see, cut gates at three quarters of an inch, right? <clears throat> and then we're gonna set our table saw blade height to two inches, okay? So you're gonna need a roll ruler for that, and you want the tip top of this blade to be at two inches. And then we're going to cut by pushing, of course, this down and in, okay? So remember, set your cut gate at three quarters of an inch wide. So let's make sure we're right there, three quarters of an inch, push that down, and your blade height at two inches. And you're gonna be cutting it, not this way, but cut it this way. So you're gonna place it down and push it through, and it's only gonna cut two inches up, and then we'll actually turn the, bo the board over and that's gonna be a dado for our uh, bottom board to fit into, okay? Okay guys, so we've now cut our channel down the middle, okay? And notice I went through it with a couple passes to make sure it's a nice good cut. And now what we're actually gonna do is cut this part off right here. So you're only gonna end up with an L shape piece of wood. Okay, and that's going to be our dado to hold our, together our uh, bottom board. Okay, so L shape is all you're going to end up with. You're going to cut off this. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you turn your board and set the piece that you're not going to cut down to the inside of your gate. You keep your gate at three quarters of an inch, and you're only going to have your blade height at three quarters of an inch. And then all you're gonna do is just push this through, okay? And that's gonna make that L-shaped dado for you. All right, guys, so you can see we made our, our dado for our bottom board. I messed up a little bit right there, but it, what you might end up with too, if it's not exactly perfect, is there might be a little sliver, as you can see down in there. And all you need to do is go through with like a utility knife See what I'm talking about right there? Just take a utility knife and kind of clean that up. All right, we're now gonna assemble our bottom board. So you're gonna take your two pieces, your L cut dadoed end pieces, and your three 22 inch long pieces, and you're gonna assemble. We'll start one at a time. You're gonna need some wood glue and some nails or a brad nailer, which I'll be using a brad nailer today. So you're gonna place some wood glue very generously on your uh, long piece here, your L piece. You're gonna take one of your 22 inch long pieces, get everything butted up nice and neat and together. And we're gonna add some brad nails. I'd say three should start to hold it. Now, we're gonna add another board Butt it up nice and tight to the other. Hold it in place. And then we're gonna finish with our last one. We're gonna bring that over. Butt it up nice and tight. Put some pressure on it. Right. Now we've got that part together. We're going to add some more wood glue to the other end. A good generous amount. As such, we're going to set it down on top nice and tight. Try to line everything up as best we can. We're going to nail. into a knot right there. Ran out of nails. But that's your basic bottom board right now. Now if if there's a little bit here in the middle where there's you know it's shored up a little bit, that's fine. The bees aren't gonna care. Okay? And I'll uh, finish up by showing you how to make your your uh, risers.
All right, guys, we just finished our bottom board. Now we're gonna cut the risers for our bottom board. So we have the remainder of our one by six here, one of them, and we're gonna make a 20 inch cut on it, okay? All right, guys, we made our 20 inch cut to finish our bottom board with risers. So we're gonna take this 20 inch one by six board. You're gonna set your cut gate at half an inch, half an inch, and you're gonna push your board through and make three half inch cuts. And when you look at this board, I want you to notice that there's no knots along this board where I'm gonna be making those three half inch slivers. Uh, the reason being is you don't want any knots in your risers because that'll weaken them, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up cutting a half inch riser, three pieces that are 20 inches long. We'll actually end up cutting one of those down to 14 and, and uh, three quarters inches. So cut three 20 inch half inch risers. So we've cut our three half inch risers. Okay, and this goes on your bottom board to actually give some space underneath your deep box so that the bees have an entrance and uh, some space underneath to crawl around. So we're gonna cut one of these down, cut one of your risers to 14 and three quarter inches, okay? So you're gonna have two risers that are 20 inches and one riser that is 14 and three quarters. So let's go ahead and cut that. All right, guys, this is the final step in the bottom board. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your 20 inch risers and they go on the side of your bottom board. Okay, and you wanna push them all the way flush to the back of one spot and then your 14 and three quarters, it goes in the middle and I would glue, add glue to each and then brad nail or nail all of them down. Now you're gonna have a two inch landing strip up here up front, okay? So remember that, so glue and nail down and that is your bottom board. All right guys, we're now gonna finish the entire situation with our lid and then all we'll have to do is add cleats to our boxes and we're gonna be done. So to uh, get your lid, you're gonna make three cuts at 20 inches on uh, your uh, one by six. So three 20 inch pieces and then we're gonna cut one down and then we'll uh, make a few more cuts on a few more things and we'll be done. All right guys, we've made our three boards for our lid at 20 inches each. Now we're gonna add some cleats to it to uh, hold it all together. So you're gonna cut two pieces, or you're gonna cut, sorry, you're gonna cut one piece at 16 and a quarter of your one by six. So cut one piece at 16 and a quarter. All right, guys, for the lid, we're gonna take that one piece that we cut at 16.25 or 16 and a quarter, and we're gonna cut it or rip it down the middle at two inches two and three quarter inches. So set your cut date, cut gate to two and three quarters inches, and you're gonna cut your 16 and a quarter inch board directly in half, and those are gonna be cleats to hold your lid together, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and cut that straight down the middle, two and three quarter inches. All right, guys, last cut on our lid. We have two boards that we're gonna keep at 20 inches, and they're just the regular one by six, and then our last, our third board that's at 20 inches and is a regular one by six, we're gonna have to cut a fourth of an inch off of it. So set your cut gate to a fourth of an inch and cut a fourth of an inch off of one of your three boards for your lid, okay? All right, guys, we're gonna assemble our flat lid and then we'll make a few cuts to add uh, cleats to this. So you've got your three boards, two of them are the 20 inches and regular one by six, and then you cut a fourth of an inch off of one of them. You're gonna line all those up nice and easy. And then you're gonna take those two boards that you ripped down, and those are gonna be your top cleats. And as you can see, that's how it's gonna get assembled, okay? Of course, you're gonna to wanna to glue all of these together and then brad nail them. So I'm gonna grab some glue, and we're gonna nail all this together. So, wanna make sure everything's lined up nice and neat. We're gonna add a good amount, a nice generous amount of glue here. So good amount of glue on the lid. Then of course your board goes down. Make sure everything is nice and butted together really well. And we'll start nailing. Okay, so we got one side together. We're gonna to make sure your other side is nice and butted together. We're going to add some glue, a nice generous amount. We're going to 
going to set that down and make sure everything is nice and tight and together. Flip this around a little bit. And like I said, press everything down so it's nice and tight. There's no warping of your lid, anything like that. We want to make sure everything is lined up. Okay. A couple nails, remember, we want it nice and flat, so we want to get everything nice and tight down together. And we'll stop right there. So that's our nice flat lid right there. So we have those cleats on top. It's pretty flat on the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a rim, a half inch rim, around the entire lid, okay? I would highly recommend that you also put screws in through all of these these three boards with your cleats because that's really going to pull it nice and tight okay and make sure that it doesn't warp uh, while you have it so what we're going to do is I'll uh, add a half inch rim to the whole thing that's going to give you some space above your your top bars and uh, allow you to feed pollen patties and whatnot in the uh, spring so there you go all right, guys, so we're going to cut our rim for our lid, a half-inch rim for our lid, so that you have some space above your top bars to feed pollen patties in the spring. So we've got some of our scrap 1x6s right here, and we're going to cut one of them to 20 inches, and we're going to cut the other one to uh, 14 and 3 quarters, okay? So uh, one to uh, 20 inches, one to 14 and 3 quarters. All right, guys, so we're going to cut the uh, rim for our flat lid. So... You're gonna need the board that you cut at 14 and three quarters. And remember on making rims or, or risers for any part of your, your hive, you don't wanna have a knot in your riser. So notice I'm cutting over here where there's no knots. It's just straight good wood. So we're gonna cut two half inch risers. So your cut gate's gonna be set at a half inch. And you're gonna cut two of them at 14 and three quarters. And then we're gonna use our 20 inch board and notice there's a knot right there, so I'm gonna cut from over here, and I'm gonna cut two risers at 20 inches, and that's gonna put a rim around our entire lid, okay? So two risers, or rims, half inch, 14 and three quarter inch long, and two half inch, 20 inches long. All right guys, we're gonna finish our lid now. So we've got our flat lid and our four rim pieces, two 20 inch pieces at half inch, and two 14 and three quarter inch long pieces at half inch. Your two uh, 20 inch pieces go on the uh, long sides, and of course the others go on the short sides, and that's gonna give you a half inch rim around the entire lid so that you can feed fallen pollen patties in the uh, spring. So, we're gonna grab some glue, put some glue on the entire edge, Place that down, make sure it's butted up against the edge, and we'll add some nails. Make sure it's butted up down here. We'll do it to the other side. Add some glue. We'll put it down. We'll add some nails. short pieces, add some glue. If you can't get them totally in there, what you do is kind of back it off, kind of like that. And then if you need to squeeze it in. And you might have to get a hammer for this and if you pop it down, see, there we go, I even use my hand. Get it in there. Nail it down, perfect. All right, last rim, add some glue, Let's see if it will fit, it's not going to fit too good, so we'll back it off and kind of pop it in using a hammer, grab a hammer, so see I backed it off over here, and then you just kind of lightly tap until you get it lined up, and then you Tap it down, line everything up, make sure it's tapped down, and then 
there's your rimmed lid. So as you can see in the video, your entire lid has a rim around it, flat, and uh, it may not sit perfectly flat on your hive, but that's what a ratchet strap is for. So now your lid's done. All we're going to do now is add cleats to our boxes, and we're done, guys. All right, guys, we're going to add our last step here, which is cleats on all our boxes so we can pick them up. So we're going to take our last one by six, and we're going to make three cuts at 16 and a quarter inches. Okay, three cuts or three, three pieces of wood at 16 and a quarter inches. All right, guys, so we're going to finish our project by putting cleats on our boxes so we can pick our boxes up. Early in the project, when we cut down our 1 by 12, we should have had some excess cleats left over. If you did have these, if you kept these and didn't throw these away, what you want to do is these should be 1 half inches wide. You're going to cut them so they're going to be 1 half inches wide. Cut them all to 16 and a quarter, and those will be your cleats. But we also did just cut these three if you didn't keep these. And these three pieces of wood, this one by six that we just cut, what we're gonna do is set our cut gate to one and a half inches, and we're gonna cut two, you should be able to get two, one and a half inch pieces out of each piece we cut, the 16 and a quarter inch long pieces. You're gonna get two out of it, okay? Or maybe three. And uh, you're gonna need six total pieces that are one and a half inches wide and 16 and a quarter inches long and we're going to use those for our cleats okay so we're going to cut at least six boards six cleats that should look like this that are one and a half inches wide by 16 and a quarter inches long you need six of them for all three of your boxes okay all right guys we're going to finish up our project by adding cleats to our box so what we want to do is we're going to actually measure two inches from the top of each box and make a mark. Okay, so two inches. And everyone always asks two inches, why two inches? Because it, it, that's just a good place to put them. That's what I do anyway. You're gonna mark your two inches and then uh, you're gonna get some glue. You're gonna add some glue to your cleat. These are the uh, one and a half inch wide pieces that you just cut and you're going to line everything up. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Hold it nice and tight and still. And you're going to add some nails to hold it in place. And then really go to town with it. And that's how you add cleats to your boxes. And you're going to do this on each side. So we'll flip it around. Measure two inches down. Add a mark, add a mark, add some glue, put some glue on your cleat, get your brad nailer, line everything up, nice and neat, at least one side, start with one side maybe. Line up your other side, whoop, dropped it a little bit. And guys, that's how you do it. And you're gonna finish that up on all of your boxes. And what I would highly recommend too, is on each box, on the ends right here where you nailed it last time, I would highly recommend putting some screws in on all your boxes and also getting a uh, one and a quarter inch screw and actually drilling in your cleats. It's not totally necessary, but it really helps keep your boxes together. So anyway, guys, that's a completed project. I'm going to add in a little bit here at the end of the video. All right, guys, so we have finished up our project. We've got a bottom board with a half inch rim around it. And of course, a full entrance. We've got a lid a cleated lid that also have a has a half inch rim space around it so that you can feed pollen patties in the early spring. We've got two medium supers and a deep box. And this is all for less than 50 bucks, guys. And uh, we even have some leftover wood right here, some one by six and a two by six. And if you're nifty, uh, you can build a, uh, a hive stand just out of that. So 
something to think about right there too. And uh, I may do a quick video on that uh, after this. But one thing I would highly recommend, guys, is I use brad nails for everything on this and staples. I'd highly recommend that you go back to each box and put some screws in. And always drill pilot holes before you drill your screw in so take a small drill bit smaller than the size of the the uh, screw and drill pre-drill it and then put your screw in so that you don't you don't uh, crack the wood okay but yeah guys all that for less than 50 bucks and we're probably going to get a hive stand out of it so uh the nice thing about this uh bottom board too is the reason we did that dado here and of course mine's not perfect we have this dado here so that when you put it flat on the ground, there's a little bit of space underneath it. The reason we do that is so that you can walk up with a dolly and slide the dolly underneath your entire hive and then pick your hive up and move the thing. Of course, you don't want to do that without like ratchet strapping the whole hive down. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick and then uh, we're going to be done. All right, guys. So we're looking at one of my breeder colonies right here. And notice that the bottom board that I built is the same as this one, okay? So see that nice little space underneath the hive? See how you can ratchet strap your lid down on the whole thing? I highly recommend that you guys do that. Uh, and the cool thing about this hive is you could literally uh, buy an entrance reducer like the one I've got here that slides in. And with this little handy dandy entrance reducer, it also closes off the hive and then you can come up, since you have space underneath it, you could come up with a dolly, pick this whole hive up, put it in the back of your truck, and move it to better forage. Uh, for those of you who think this is Noxema, this is just cleansing flights. We had our first warm day, and as you can see, the bees have been out cleansing the crud out of themselves the last couple days. So, not Noxema, but cleansing flights. So, I'd highly recommend getting yourself a ratchet strap instead of just putting bricks on top of your lids to hold everything down, okay? Hey there guys, one last thing I wanna say about the uh, beehive we just built. I highly recommend that you put at least three coats of paint on that thing, and uh, I highly recommend that you paint all surfaces on the bottom board and the lid. That includes the outside and the inside. Some people may think that that's not necessary or uh, you know, bees maybe shouldn't come in contact with uh, the paint, but it'll give that hive a lot longer serviceable life if you do that for the bottom board and for the lid. So I highly recommend you do that. Um, on the boxes, I would just paint the uh, outsides, but I highly recommend three coats on all surfaces of the outsides and then uh, just make sure you really fill in any cracks with uh, paint. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe.